the reason why I love AI is because it makes me more efficient mm. you know, if I have a business consultancy that's literally what I do AI yeah. tools is replacing like two three members of stuff, stuff yeah. is that a good thing I don't know but it's really helping me scale my business faster and more efficiently than yeah. if I um didn't have access to these tools so I can see the yeah. uh, I saw I saw a picture um, that, that that just made me really kind of uh, that helped picture, visualize this this really um, yeah. dilemma of the AI it was about it was two people on the, on the bus one was looking down at the, at the cliff and was upset blew upset and and his his mind was like oh my god AI is gonna take away my job mm. but the other person was on the same bus looking left and seeing kind of the beauty of it and going oh look because of AI, I have enough time now to go on holiday yeah. and go on think, things. So it's about how you really think about time and the world as well. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. So that's a go. <laughs> yeah. What's good? What's good? It's all right, you, you know. Good? Feeling good? Yeah, I just, I just, I just want people to bless me. Yeah. I, I think they should bless me by sending money to my Go Money account. Really? Yeah, I think mm. so. You know, I'm about to travel soon. You know, actually, by the time people see this, I'd have been in London, yeah. enjoying my life, taking a break from crazy Lagos. Um, so yeah, you guys, you can open your account in under three minutes. In ongoing money? Yeah, literally, really quick. That's actually quite good, you know. I, I'm trying to get a normal account through really, I have to go to these banks and like just sit down, get yeah. all these details, then they'll tell you to wait the next day before you get your card and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. Under three minutes you get an account. That's quite cool. Three minutes, it's it's all right. So yeah. um when you sending me money. Shout out to Go Money. <laughs> <laughs> but on, 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 on another hand... <laughs> Say no to Nigerian men. <laughs> on another hand, no, no, no. Why are you always saying this, though? Like, Nigerian men are, Nigerian men are good, right? Like, what are you saying, bro? Nigerian men are... <laughs> is he agrees with me? I can see that, Is it a Edo guy? Edo, oh, yeah. Edo is different. Edo is different. <laughs> They're known to be one of the most <laughs> fetish men <laughs> really? in Nigeria. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It's a very, it's a very still joke. Very still joke. Very, right? Very. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I, I please introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, my name is Ose. Um, Ose Tohame, that's the full name. Matthew. Um, I work in software. I've been building software for a while now. I think eight, nine years. Cool. Um, I've evolved really from, you know, just building software to being a product manager where I, where I, you know, ensure that we are making the right software to fit the market and the market understands what we are building and can, you know, mm. um, feel it, touch it, use it. So you're one of the, the tech bros that people are worried about in this in this place. Absolutely, it, yes. In, 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 Lakers, Nigeria, at this, in this age bracket, it's between, it's tech bros versus Femi KPMG. <laughs> <laughs> But then Femi KPMGs well, are losing. Right? Yeah, they're losing, yeah. They can't afford Femi us. Femi KPMGs losing. Femi yeah, they're KPMG losing. Femi start no chance. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah, wow, yeah, wow. Yeah. So, you're the tech bro. So, what does it feel like being a tech bro in Lagos? Like, what, what is it? <laughs> what is <laughs> life? What is life start? Typical There's lifestyle of a tech bro. But then... <laughs> what is lifestyle of a tech bro? <laughs> okay, so first of all... People... Have anybody told you that? Can you teach me how to code? Oh, yeah, a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. That's, That's annoying though, isn't it? It's not annoying at all. It's not annoying at all. It's a testament to... To testament to the you know growth of the of the space, mm. and I don't want to think it as a space because of course technology is very transient. Even even when we discovered like the SQL or the Telegram, mm. that was technology at that time and it was great. So, but the space is very is growing and making things happen. So you see people who not just you know make money off these things but also create very efficient tools that you know help um, everyday life mm. and um, by doing so help people get better wealthier healthier you know whatever problems they solve and then people say oh i want to be able to build this mm. thing i mean i think it's a privilege to help mm -hmm. if i can no. show you how to why absolutely i think the tech industry is going on, on, i mean this current era it's going to be one of the best things that happened to nigeria really because a lot of young people i find avenues to kind of earn uh, yeah. revenue from that as well so yeah. it's quite good do, do, you, do you find it um relatively easy or do you think like 
um, you would have preferred a different career if there wasn't the opportunity. I was going to be a doctor. I'd have regretted it. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was going to be a doctor. So I spent I spent the last two years um, working with one of Africa's foremost um, ed tech platforms. Mm. And in that time, <clears throat> in that time, I was, you know, responsible for, I was responsible for helping, helping more people, you know, move into technology, technology jobs, um, you know, noobs, people who didn't know anything about HTML or CSS, mm. you know, getting in and um, in the next couple of months, they say, oh, I landed my first internship here. Even people from very odd places in the continent, Kibera and Kenya. Um, I worked with HP to see how we can get over a hundred girls, you know, young girls. Kibera is like one of the poorest wow. places in the continent. And um, to be honestly, ordinarily, there are very few aspirational roles that people like people in Kibera would fit into. Mm. And we're able to, you know, reach those people and pull them out to, you know, get into this very interesting space. Um, so, yeah, I think even though it's hard, Things like, even though it can get hard, you know, things like, um, things like that makes it super easy. You know, when you understand that these are the results that could sprout out of, you know, doing the things that you enjoy doing, even though, even though it's hard to do, even though we have to spend time building this crazy product and we have to maybe do it again because something broke or a client is crazy, you know, even, even though that's the case sometimes. The results of these things are so worth it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So um, I have been privy to some of the things that you're working on, and there's one thing in particular that I'm so excited about. So I want you to talk a bit about what you've got coming next. Okay. So um, funny thing is, a lot of people do not, a lot of people do not believe me when I say I moved to Lagos just two years ago. Where did you move from? Oh, I, I I was I was working with I was working in Edo State. I was working with HP okay. and the Edo State government. Um, so I was in Edo State after school. I just stayed there. Um, and then I felt like the wages are higher in Lagos. I do I do better work than these people. I should be there. Mm. And I and I moved two years. Um, but in that two years, I have built a lot of interesting things. The first thing I did in Lagos was I started a planting chips factory. Now, I mean, I've been a tech person. Why am I selling planting mm. suddenly? So, um, I wanted to. I, I'm going there. No, no, it's I'm, not, right. I'm not. I'm not digressing. <laughs> so, I wanted to create a product that um, people would enjoy eating. But while they do that, we can advertise in their hands. So, our nylons would not just be, would not just carry our branding, but also maybe go money. Mm. You know, so while people are eating and consuming what they are enjoying, they're also reading something that Goal Money wants them to see. Mm. So in that way, they receive the news better. And that's crazy, crazy numbers. You are putting Goal Money's brand in the hand of 50,000 people every day. Mm. You know, so I wanted to build that sort of business, but I wanted to go into the route of an already established um, channel, which is food. Mm. Um it was hard. We didn't succeed because supply chain vulnerabilities. What's the other, you know, I was talking about supply chain vulnerabilities. Very hard to build here. But while we were building, there was something that we had to do. We had to really, really network. I was at, um, typically, typically, a lot of people would say I'm manageable, but boy. Mm. Ah. I, you also also <laughs> I would go to the distributors in Akpongbom, somewhere at um, Lagos Island. Oh. I needed them. To, I needed my products to be in the market. I would. I, I. I had to network. I had to. I had to give out a lot of business cards. I had to find business everywhere, and it was a very expensive and you know, um, physically draining process. Mm. You know, so when I got a lot more stabilized, I got into better tech jobs. I got more. Some of my some of my contacts paid off. I actually began to make some of the tech money. Um, I, I knew more people in the industry, so I like, you know, let's build a product. Um, so we built a business card, you know, something that could help businesses who were at that stage or mm. any stage at all, to be honest, something that could help people who 
want to hustle they want to do they just don't want to sit down they want to go out and you know make things happen as regards whatever they are building people mm. who are excited about building what they are doing and they feel like i'm the best person to build this thing so we we made a business card that um, you know takes away all the hassles currently business cards are business cards are a very integral part of you know business as small and as simple as they are they are very important so it's uh, estimated that we print about 27 million of these every day. Um, but then we have to keep printing over and over and over. It's not environmentally sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's not responsible to do that, actually, because this is trees, this is paper. Um, I mean, why not just have one that, um, why not just have one that you can use forever? Mm. You know, just one. Use it forever. It evolves with you. If you decide to not be a podcaster and you want to sell lights, mm. You know, you can just edit your details off and it's a brand new card. Mm. So, I mean, why not just do that instead? So we built that. Um, and um, yeah, we are very excited. A lot of people are excited about it. We have a wait list currently of about 1,400 people who are waiting to use the product. Mm. Mm, it's called Yola. Yola. Yeah, yeah, it's called Yola. Why is it Yola? I don't know, but it's called Yola. So I was thinking about something just when you said that. So I've been research online about stuff like that that's kind of like virtu uh, virtual business NFC cards, where, cards yeah. where you can tap a phone and exactly, then that's uh, what it is, number yeah. comes up as well right so you know in like in nigeria right so i mean for me specifically and people i interact with i actually collect more people's account numbers than their phone numbers yeah what do you mean? People don't transfer to oh, your transfer to your account number. I don't, mm. even, I, don't, I don't need that phone number. It might just be a merchant on the streets or whatever mm. it is. Oh, okay, yeah. You just do that quick transfer, right? Mm -hmm. So is there a possibility where it's like, ah, oh, give me your account number. No, no, just tap your phone and then you tap your phone and oh, then you no. just yeah. send the That's person. That's like, what, person. like a contactless card in the UK? Bank card, basically. Not like bank cards, but like, where you tap the phone, the account number, they just push guest on the, I guess on the, on the mm -hmm. bank app or mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? They will I'm just thinking your money, boy. <laughs> so, so, so the truth is, I mean, what he's saying is a genuine concern. The, the truth is that we are much more than just our phone numbers. Mm. And there's so many sides to our businesses. We want to let people know that oh, we featured on this, um, on this um, blog. You know, I was published on this newspaper article. You want to let people know all of those things. You want to let people know that you're credible. Don't let people know also that you have a bank account. Mm. You know, there's just so much more. So that's why when we're building Yola, we just didn't build Yola to share contact. We built Yola to showcase you. Mm. You know, so when somebody taps your card, it's not just your number they see. They see everything you want them to see about you, everything about you that is beautiful. Oh, okay. So you can add like a mini things. website. Yeah, yeah like exactly. Like a mini website. website. I'm yeah. sure we'll show a demo in the video, but yeah. it, it's like a mini site. Oh, that's NFC interesting, though. Know. Yeah, and you can and, brand it. Yeah, and and how when when did that come out? When can people actually get handle so that? We are we are going to market um on the fifteenth of this month. To be honest, we are just rounding off conversations with um with um our investors and because I want to go to the market strong. Every day I every day I take walks, you know, around my house and I see these billboards and I say we are going to be on these things. These mm -hmm. are the Amen. most expensive billboards in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So we have to be on these things. We have to put we are the most creative copywriters ads i need to be on these things we we mm. need to show people that uh nigerians can think of big business mm. and you know actually have the balls to create them mm. mm -hmm. no no but so how do you kind of finance such a product because of, and and what's the how can how can you make money off that kind of stuff yeah so the the cards are the cards are quite cheap yeah, please I mean, don't say. Please don't say. I don't. I, I don't want you to say what your gross margin I'm, is. I'm not. Not I'm the not, gross margin. No, no. He's not gonna I'm, say I'm not going to. I'm not going don't. to say. say <laughs> but I mean, but they are quite. They are quite cheap compared yeah. to, compared to the paper counterparts. Mm. Um, compared to the paper counterparts, they are. They are. They are maybe a thousand times cheaper. But um, I mean, we managed to. We managed to scrape up scope of some decent profits and and i think i mean i don't know why this is not mainstream to be it's, honest it could be culture as well i mean it, it is culture because it's huge that, in america yeah, just, uh, it, yeah. and, and and i see ads for nfc business cards in other places yeah. so it is cultural and, and it's good you know everyone that has a first movers advantage is is always great and you have that now 
I'm here. And if you start strong, you can capture a lot of market share before. You know, people like to copy and paste a lot in Nigeria when they mm-hmm. see something making money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you start strong, you allow them, you allow yourself to kind of eat, you know, yeah, get a lot. Market share before yeah. You get more yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's the thing. To be honest, we're already, we're already building like the next phase and the next phase of the product, which is incredible. Um, it is incredible. So there's, there's a lot of possibilities that can sprout out of just mm. a single, a simple tap. We can actually change how we do things, you know, every every day. So you can even you can even get to, I mean, because it, it, well, if you influence culture, you could add new things later. So it's, for example, let's say his app or that the car that becomes the a way of sharing information quickly. Yeah, it could just be a medium to share information. So it could be a medium yeah. to share information, a medium to share finances. Mm-hmm. You might not get to a point where you now becomes ah, send me money, boom. Yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. you can never know that like, if it's a if the way of culture, people can, you can start integrating things into it because you're 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 changing the way how information is shared, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, right from uh, every everybody who has come on here, they've said one thing. To be honest, they've said that every business is your logistics business, whether they said it or not. Exactly. But that that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Every business is your logistics business, which is how do you move whatever good services people yeah. from point A to point B in supply chain you know yeah. that's that's just that's just everything mm. how do we move whatever we are saying now to the ears of the audience yeah. or the eyes how do we how do we move from point A to point B so if we have a simple thing that can transfer mm. that information from <clears throat> from server to receiver <clears throat> we can we can share everything. Okay, Lord, yeah, it's, I, I, I share like everything. it. I like it. I want to talk to you about something that I'm obsessed with, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, and it's AI. Mm-hmm. So AI is literally transforming the way we learn, the way we do things, the way we run businesses, the way we it's it's transforming, you know, every society, and it's it's happening at different rates in different countries. And it has its benefits and its weaknesses. So as a tech bro, I want to know what are your thoughts on AI? Um, what sectors do you think is actually cannibalizing? Or, or what do you think, what do you think it is? Is it a case where we just need to reskill? I just want to know what you think about um, what's happening at the moment. We're in a world of very many problems. So but people like you, I, we are very blinded by our privilege. But the truth is that there are people out there who are blind. They've never seen anything their whole life. So mm. There are people out there who can't walk, can't... Um, <clears throat> they, they, they are going to have Alzheimer's at some point. They do not know now what mm. they are going to. So the, the truth is, AI presents to us a very great opportunity. But because of how comfortable we are, we overlook that and we always feel threatened instead because we don't want to lose our advantage. Mm. But I think it's high time that people started um people started understanding how this could first of all benefit you know the the this first of all make you know you know the world inclusive more inclusive for everybody and then you now start thinking about how how can i how can i ride on this mm. if you think this beast is going to eat you it might not eat you, but you are just wasting your time thinking. You should thinking about how to ride it. So I think it's a very it's it's a hot topic at this time. And I think it's a waste of time. People should start thinking about how to get on. Exactly. And and I think one thing I've noticed too is not everybody has the the um willingness, tenacity, um, to learn the tools, to use the tools, to to really use it to their advantage. So mm. no matter what, you're always gonna have a group that will benefit from it from it more, more than others yeah, so yeah, you sure. don't really need to worry too much you know i mean i mean for for example right i love the way that ai is simplifying a lot of complex tasks yeah and um considering that the world is moving towards a future that um let's say nigerians especially and not african countries are probably don't have enough patience to learn the code and learn this kind of hard task yeah. ai can come and step in to improve education improve different things on on technology itself mm-hmm. so yeah. you might see a kid that is in the village, but can edit videos with AI. Exactly. Right. And they can now get access to those type of jobs that need those type of quality of work. So mm-hmm. I see that it's, sim- it's, it's bringing a way to simplify like a lot of hard tasks. Yeah. And that can allow other people in other areas that don't have not, uh, that advantage access yeah. to those things to do those work. So, mm-hmm. so in some ways it's good, but obviously there's, there's, you can see the reason why there's a bit of opera in terms of, okay, let's be yeah. worried about certain things 100%. because of the level of efficiencies operating on, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. 
And I mean, I you. follow a lot of AI inst- um, Instagram pages and I look at the comments and mm. you'd be surprised, actually. Uh, you're looking at almost 70% negative sentiment. Oh, um, I don't think this is good. We need to fight against mm-hmm. this. No, I don't want use to use a machine. I want a human being to do it. Mm. You know, I'm, maybe because we're from the Western world, we've been speaking to robots on the phone. For, the whole time. Uh, uh, for banks for the last five, six years, you yeah. know. But um, there is definitely a pushback. You know, as much as there are some of us that are, you know, enjoying it because it makes us, the reason why I love AI is because it makes me more efficient. Mm. You know, if I have a business consultancy, that's literally what I do. Yeah. AI tools is replacing like two, three members of staff. staff yeah. Is that a good thing? I don't know, but it's really helping me scale my business faster and more efficiently than yeah. if I um, didn't have access to these tools. So I can see the. Yeah. Uh, I saw I saw a picture um, that, that that just made me really kind of uh, helps visualize this this really um, yeah. dilemma of the AI. It was about it was two people on the, on a bus. One was looking down at the, at the cliff and was ups- a little upset, and and his his mind was like, oh my god, AI is going to take away my job. Mm. But the other person was on the same bus looking left and seeing kind of the beauty of it and going, oh look, because of AI, I have enough time now to go on holiday yes. and go on think things. So. It's about how you really think about time and the world as well. If you're making, for me, if you're making things quicker and more efficient, I f- I look at the joy of it. I'm like, oh my god, that's an hour, two hours I can use something Trust else. Trust me, yeah. Jesus. So it's 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 the way of the world. To be honest, mm-hmm. we we feared everything to this point. We feared we feared that we feared mechanization. Yeah, cars, because I yeah. mean, we needed people to work on the farms, on the plantations. Mm-hmm. We feared that oh god, they are going to mechanize things. What will I do? We feared everything. So. We feared cars. We feared yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's no history. We have There's more to fear, in fact. We will not run out of things to fear. Mm. But people would always profit. Yeah. Business yeah. will keep new business ideas will come out. Yes. New things will come into place. No, that's good. One quick question though. If you're the president of Nigeria, what would you do differently? So mm, <clears throat> if I was president of Nigeria, so I think a very good base to start, whatever thing that we have to do in this country is an identification identification yeah of people of everything they, okay we need to know we need to know who everybody is we need to know we need to know who you are who your mother is who your father is mm, when you walk <laughs> but, 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 i'd rather you didn't no no no, no. okay so there's two there's two points to that and, 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 and uh, okay first of all right there's a lot of identifications right now You've got the BVN, you've got the NIN, mm. you've got this, 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 that. There's so much going on that I always feel like is there'll be something else that will come on in another two, three years now. And it's a scheme for people to make money, right? I don't really feel like it's well, been efficiently managed. Oh, there's no coherence. Oh, there's no coherence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So why is why is this not linked to this and linked to that? We'll just have one yeah. number, right? So that that's another thing, I think. Another, another um, uh, perspective is... Yes, identification is important, but security, do you want to have so much information given to the government about yourself? Right? That's another question because I'll, I'll give you, if, if you go to uh, the UK right now, um, some other Western countries, because of so much cameras and tracking and all these things, it's people so literally are now. living like they're, they, they, they're living in the it's world, China, that's but they're literally in jail. China is it's, it's, it's it's literally jail, like yeah. jail, China yeah. as well, specifically. Yeah. Face tracking, you just Social you walk on the street, yeah. a camera will look at you, they'll know exactly who you are, XYZ, right? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, there's good, but human beings need a degree of freedom. 100%. Right. And if you're always, if it's, if it's, if the surveillance is too much, it can actually affect the experience of how you enjoy life. So that's another question. My dad would always say safety before comfort. So we have a lot of bad faith actors, and if somehow we don't know where you live, if somehow we don't know where you go to when you leave work, if we don't know why you paid twenty thousand naira, and we don't know who you paid it to, we're in trouble. That's how we're in trouble. More, more, more. It's more. It's more likely that you are engaging in the wrong things. Mm. That's how we can fight terrorism. That's how we can. But but do you know that's that how we can have the, a country that has that makes sense. The smartest people would 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 benefit because the people who are dumb that don't know how to navigate themselves around that that will suffer the most when the surveillance comes into place. So the same people that you're going to fight against mm. are the same people that are going to know how to move, navigate like their way that around that. Mm. So yeah. who are you gonna? Who are you actually affecting the most? So you're affecting the poor people the most. Mm, no, no. So if I if I need to if I need to hire thugs, who are they going to be? 
So the more high level crimes just leave footprints. See, the more high level your crime is, mm. you, you just leave footprints. There's just something you would leave, you would leave a footprint. And if we if we want you enough, we they can find you. So it's the lower level crimes that's that are harder. You you are mugged at the corner of the street. Those ones are harder to find. You you hardly find the perpetrators. But the higher level crimes, trust me. Mm. Where, where can you hide one billion dollars? You can't hide one billion dollars. Yeah, I, I don't know, but also I, I hear you, but I'm tired. But all these speeding cameras, all this CCTV, it's it's just dystopian. It's a lot, you know. I, I think that we always say, I always say that we sell our privacy for this mm. so called security or convenience. And I and I just think it's a lot. You should be able to um live your life without Would you rather be bombed? Hmm? Would you rather be bombed? I mean, I don't think it's stopping the bombings. We had CCTV, we had seven yeah. seven, we had CCTV, we had you know, it, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop anything. Anyway. It can deter a subsection of, of criminals, mm-hmm. but I don't think it stops anything. It's it's a good conversation. That's why there's a debate here, right? It's a good yeah. conversation. And I like that you brought that up. We need to be able to we need to be able to know people to the end. If we do not, we are not going we are not running a country. Mm. So part of the issues we had for security was that our borders are porous. You know, if we do not we we can't succeed in agriculture. We can't succeed in securing lives and properties. We can't succeed in anything. We closed our borders to the importation of rice, but we still imported rice, and we invested a lot in outgrower schemes. We invested a lot in mm-hmm. we invested a lot in giving incentives to um to feed um to rice meal processors, you know, to set up here. Mm-hmm. But all of that, all of that effort was wasted because somehow rice was still smuggled through the borders. If we don't have walls, you can't have a country. Mm. If you don't have walls, so you can't have a country. That. If yeah. we don't know who everybody is, I'm not saying police them. I'm not saying of course there's of course the part for responsible usage of data. There's there's that. There's that. But if we keep living like if we keep living like this, we are living a lot of we're living a lot of um, you know, openness and informality and that can only be used for the wrong reasons. And that's what attracts a lot of people to Nigeria in the first place, the of lawlessness. Course, the degree of freedom. <laughs> it's our, it ha- Nigeria has yeah. a higher degree of freedom. No, no. Mm-hmm. It's a, let's let's mm-hmm. stop it there. Good chat. Yeah. How can people get to know you and what you're doing? Yeah, so um I mean I'm on Instagram. I'm very happy there. <laughs> I'll reserve my comments. <laughs> yeah. I'm very happy on Instagram. Um Oseto Hame O S E T O H A M E. And then Yola is just Yola Cards on mm-hmm. Instagram also. Nice. And, and he builds amazing websites. Really? Yeah. yeah so I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll gonna, put some in the description. Yeah, he gonna, builds gonna incredible website. websites. And you do it yourself, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah you're going to build he's, my, he's, my he's next He's doing site, mine boy. as well, yeah. So, yeah, um, you're going to build my next site. Thank I, you I've for actually coming been looking on. for site designers, but I just haven't found No, he's one. amazing. Like, amazing. It's really good. That's easy. I'm not in the tech community. I'm not tuned in. Oh, that's true. I'm not plug in. Like, I'm just outside watching them do their thing. I have a bias because, I mean, I know like everyone there. Yeah, yeah that's good. Of course. Of course. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes.